Hello Wargamers, Invasive Ramnus here, and today I want to do a quick unboxing and discussion video about uh, Forge World. So, to start off, I just got my two Tower Moras that I ordered at Gen Con back. And uh, so this is basically all the instructions you get, and then these are all the goodies. Um, so, if you look at it, it has really nice detail. Um, this is the fuselage here. Um, comes in just one solid piece, which is really nice. It's a nice hunk of resin, uh, which is great. And then the two wing parts. So let's get this a little organized here. All right, fuselage, looks great. Wing parts, let's see, what side does this go on? I think this one goes, yeah, like this. So that's that one, and then this one like that and so the wings are pretty straightforward um, you get these two long barrel burst cannons um, this one is a little miscast so I'll have to do a little touch-up work there as you can see um, which is too bad but um, still good uh, so I think that one goes there and then another one over here and then you get all these little little bits here that um, go either as uh, vector thrusters or um, as this uh, seeker missiles. So here's the thrusters and then here are parts for the for the missiles there. Um, and of course it comes on a large flying base or a skimmer base. So uh, yeah these guys will have a pretty big footprint. I was really surprised about how big this actually turned out to be. I was expecting it to be a little bit more drone size but really um, Let's see, it's probably, you know, a good eight inches or so uh, from, you know, wing, wing tip to wing tip. So an eight inch wingspan, which is not tiny. Um, so they're pretty big, which is cool. Um, I think probably the way I'll do this is uh, assemble it completely except for the, the missiles here. So I can get into these, these points here for painting and uh, do that. Uh, I will say that it took a couple minutes for me to figure out exactly how I'm supposed to attach the burst cannons to the uh, hull and then get the wing so that it's going to actually still move because they're supposed to be able to fold over fold over like this, right? So, um, you know, this is the standard pose and this is the storage pose. So, um, just got to make sure that you don't glue don't glue any either of uh, this part or this part into the burst cannon or the the hull respectively so i think that'll be and it'll be pretty straightforward so all right that's the remora the second thing i want to talk about um i guess we'll just leave this here is the ivara uh suit that they announced on forge world and i'll put a link to some uh pictures of it uh in the description below if you haven't seen it yet but it looks really cool it's like a hazard version of a riptide as opposed to a you know normal riptide or a kind of stealth suit version of the Riptide, which the uh, Arvana, what, Arvana was, um, even though the Arvana was a heavy support, not stealthy at all. It still had that, that stealth suit look to it. Um, yeah, so this looks amazing. Uh, it has a huge set of thrusters in the back instead of the standard jetpack, um, along with a tri-barreled flamer and something that looks like um, an ion accelerator crossed with a um whatever the what did they shoot guys what is that um uh, i'm blanking on it right now but it looks like a you know like it could be a shotgun uh version of ion accelerator which is what i think it will be um yeah so there's some discussion online about what what the rules might be for this uh, some people are saying that just because of the massive quantity of thrusters on it that is going to be a flying monstrous creature i think that's preposterous i don't think that's going to happen at all uh, but i could be wrong of course and so only time will tell but i really think it's probably just going to have um uh some sort of enhanced movement beyond just being a jetpack um so probably we'll have uh vectored retro thrusters maybe some other benefit on top of that but really you know if you think about a riptide uh, is a really big model and uh, you need a lot of thrusters in order to make it move so um, 
dynamically and have the agility that uh, vectored retro thrusters would in, uh, impose. So it, I think it makes sense that it's just a riptide with uh, vectored retro thrusters. Uh, as for the weaponry, um, it has um, that flamer, which I think will probably have some sort of torrent ability, maybe a uh, you know a low AP, probably not, but probably probably like a heavy three torrent flamer, something like that um, is my speculation. And then the ion weapon, I think, is really what might make this uh, interesting. Is uh, you know it probably would be something mixed between ion accelerator and heavy burst cannon in terms of functionality. So I could see something like a, uh, you know, a heavy six Nova charge to, you know, a heavy 12 um, strength, seven AP three type thing, um, where it's just like a huge amount of shots, but the catch would be that maybe it only has a range of 18 inches, um, something real close combat -y or close range. So that's kind of what I think. I, it comes in at uh, at about 125 US dollars and I would really like to get one um, I'll probably ask for one for Christmas but I probably will not be ordering one on launch day uh, contrary to my initial reaction of here we gotta get to get this uh, I probably will wait so uh, yeah so check out the pictures in the description below uh, there's some really good ones there but other than that uh, happy wargaming and uh, you know, let me know if you guys have any questions.